Good afternoon and welcome to Daytime Blue Ridge. I'm Natalie Fonz. And I'm Brittany Flowers. And we're starting today in the Frankie Rowan's Kitchen with Executive Chef Ted Polfelt. Great Thanks, to see you again, friend. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You're making a delicious dish here. It's a pork dish, right? Yeah, so it's a cornmeal fried pork. We're uh, running this on special this weekend at the restaurant. I thought I'd demo kind of how to really take a cutlet or an off cut and pound it out and tenderize it so that way you can use it at home. Because we all like cheap food, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And I feel ideas. like pork chops are very full. For some yeah. reason, whenever I think of fall, I always think of pork chops. I, I would agree with you 100%. Okay, so what do we do? So I've got a pork chop here, and we're using a loin, which is actually a little bit tender. I really don't need to. You could use a slab of pork butt or any of those off cuts towards the other ends of the cow. But for here, we're going to pound this out. Pounding it out tenderizes it because it breaks up those muscle strands, mm -hmm. okay. so that way it's a little shorter when you chew on it. Um, so we've got this meat mallet, and to kind of go through the process, we've got one sheet of plastic wrap, and then the pork chop, and another sheet on top. And this is to protect the protein so that we're not hammering it down like on your hand or something because that would okay, hurt. That so would, same thing. Yes, it would. So break it up. So you've got three sides. You've got big side, small side, and a flat side. And what you really want to do is let the weight of the hammer do the work. So as I'm coming down, it's breaking up those muscle strands. And once you tenderize it slightly, you can then turn to the flat side and you can actually shape it. So that oh, way you don't end up with like an amoeba oh, shape. Can you over tenderize? Yeah, uh, that... yeah, you can. I mean, I okay. could pound this down to where it's thinner than paper and I can see through it. That's probably a little too thin. You yeah. want to stop just before there. Okay. So you just basically want to repeat this process until you get it as thin as you'd like. So you can switch to the smaller side after that once you've kind of started to break it up. Okay. Notice I'm not, I always have to tell my students that they're not. Right, right, right. Yeah. Don't, yeah. You're just letting it drop. Yeah, just letting it drop. It's but it also, like, gets your anger out a little bit. Well, it does, and that's always a good stress relief. Some people <laughs> prefer running, but if you want to play with this thing, you yeah, know, I like right. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So you can see it's starting to get a little more translucent. Yeah. And from there, we're actually going to soak this, and this would work a lot better if you soak this uh, pork cutlet and buttermilk overnight. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It would actually, the acid in the buttermilk would actually help tenderize it a little bit more. Okay, so you would definitely recommend doing that. I would, at right, least overnight. Can. If you can't, just do it for, you know, 20 minutes or so before it goes into the pan. Mm -hmm, okay. So I could go a little bit thinner, but we'll stop there. I like a little okay. bit of chew. So mm -hmm, now it's pounded out. We're going to go right into the buttermilk. Like I said, be better if you let it sit there overnight. And that's just straight buttermilk? Straight buttermilk. Okay. And Easy let's enough. say you didn't have buttermilk at home, you can substitute. You can take whole milk and add a touch of lemon juice to it. Oh. I think, uh, don't ask me the ratio, I think it's like a cup to like an ounce of lemon juice. And that, it's not going to be the same, yeah. but it'll give a little bit of that same acid and a little bit of the same mouthfeel with the dairy. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. So once that is nice and coated, um, I could do this, you know, normally we get flour, egg wash, or whatever this is, and mm -hmm. some breadcrumbs or something. We're going straight cornmeal today. If you don't like the bite of cornmeal, I personally like it. I like the chewy kind of. I do too. To I do it. too. Um, you could cut this cornmeal with flour, and you don't even have. You could do straight flour if you didn't want to do cornmeal. I just prefer the bite. A little bit. Okay. Of bite, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you get that nice and yeah. Covered. And so once that's nice and covered, you can have a large pot. I prefer cast iron because it conducts heat nice. Already staged over here, and what we're going to do when we lay this in, you always want to make sure you tilt the oil away from you, because if okay. I just lay it right in, it's going to splash me and create some. Not so favorable burn marks. That is good to know. <laughs> it's important. You've know, you got even, a lot of oil in even there. Even seasoned chefs like myself and many of our uh, crew, every once in a while you forget. Yep. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like and grandma. you're going fast and you've got a lot of things right. going on and same you just thing, forget. Same thing with any pot on your stove. You know, this cast iron conducts heat really well. You always want to make sure you grab all your pans with a towel. Okay. okay. Always. Or at least. You might have oven mitts. My wife has those. I hate them. Oh, uh, I, I prefer like a towel. Mitts. But <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I use oven mitts. I guess it's like a when you're a girl a guy novice. Thing. <laughs> you know, novice yeah. So that's fine. We'll talk about some of the other accompaniments we've yeah. yeah. got with this dish here. What is here. this? Uh, this is a uh, pickled green tomato uh, relish. Mm -hmm. So we had some pickled green tomatoes we pickled in the past, and we were preserving them. And uh, we dice those up nice and neat. A little bit of shaved garlic little bit of uh, sauteed onions and sweet corn to kind of sweeten it up. Mm -hmm. Mix mm -hmm. that together, it's a nice relish. It's already got the acid there from the pickling, so it'll cut with all the, the fat from that fried pork chop. Okay, and then right. what is this? And this is uh, some herbed farro that we're serving underneath it. Farro is just a specific type of wheat grain, so you can buy farro and co-op natural food stores, natural aisle section of your grocery store, mm -hmm. and easiest way to cook it is to boil it and kind of like pasta, and yeah. you can strain it off. Cool it down, and then you can either fold in butter, or you can saute it, and whatever. Did you, you add want. some herbs in there? Yeah, we've got some nice chopped parsley, a little bit of okay. chives. 
Um, and we actually sent this one with a little bit of uh, lemon. Go right ahead. You're, you're on a lock. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh, okay. Please. <laughs> Pork chops frying up. So this kind of, and then there's a little bit of sumac that's around here, which uh, sumac's a Middle Eastern grain, not the kind of sumac mm. that's poisonous in Virginia, but it has a little bit okay. of uh, kind of lemony tone, lemon note, and that's just a little sumac oil to kind of kiss it off. So Great. How is it? Really good. Really good. I can't wait to try the pork. But we're going to offer up a recipe on our website? Yes, absolutely. Go to our website, look up cornmeal fried pork chops. We'll have that there for you. Oh, man, it looks so good. Meanwhile, make sure to go visit 419 West. Say hello to Ted and the gang over there. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ted.